Oh, let's see what a pretty dress. Oh, how beautiful you look tonight. Let me tell you something that everybody around here don't know. We're only killing time with this circus. We've got bigger time to follow. Hey, welcome to a new video. Circuses were once well known for displaying human freaks for entertainment. Today's video covers some of the most famous oddities that performed as sideshow attractions. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, like the video. 20. Schlitzie Born on September 10, 1901 in the Bronx, New York, Simon Metz, later known as Schlitzie, was an American sideshow performer who gained fame for his role in circuses and sideshows during the early 20th century. Schlitzie was born with a condition known as microcephaly, which caused his head to be significantly smaller than average, which also included his brain, resulting in intellectual disabilities. Despite these challenges, Schlitzie possessed a joyful and loving personality that endeared him to those around him. His career began when he was quite young, and his first job was to interact with spectators and try to make them laugh. Oh, let's see what a pretty dress. Oh, how beautiful you look tonight. Soon, he displayed a remarkable ability to remember names and faces, so regulars began to form a close bond with him. The now infamous Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus was the group to launch Schlitzie's career to the next level. He enjoyed a long and fruitful career performing, which he claimed to very much enjoy. He is remembered today mostly for his warm personality and charm. Sadly, Schlitzie passed away at the age of 70. 19. Ella Harper Ella Harper was born in 1870 with an extremely rare orthopedic condition known as congenital genu recurvatum. This condition caused her knees to bend backward, allowing her to walk on all fours with her feet facing upward, almost like a camel. This earned her the nickname Camel Girl. She was discovered by a showman when she was a child and offered a place in the circus. Ella's performances consisted of demonstrating her distinct walk and mobility, captivating audiences. Despite her condition, she exuded confidence and charm, which made her quite popular. As she traveled the country with circuses and entertained crowds, she also had a hand in challenging social norms and expanding people's understanding of physical differences. Ella's story is unique because she actually decided to save up her money and leave the circus in pursuit of a more conventional life. She got married in 1905 and lived the rest of her days with her husband in Tennessee. Ella passed away at age 51 in 1921. 18. Johnny Eck Johnny Eck was born in 1911 with another extremely rare congenital disorder called sacral agenesis, which resulted in the absence of the lower half of his torso, hence his stage name, The Half Boy. Despite this physical limitation, Johnny became extremely famous in the circus and was known for his positivity and determination. Before even joining the circus, Johnny loved to entertain people. As a child, he became an accomplished magician, artist, musician, and actor showcasing his talents at theaters and sideshows. He would eventually join Ward Hall's traveling circus with an act full of illusions and displays of physical strength. Hello, Venus. Hello, Johnny. Hey, Prozo. What else did you dream? He became a beloved character in the sideshow industry seemingly overnight. Today, Johnny is best known for his performance in the classic film Freaks, which also featured Schlitzie and other popular human oddities. 17. Stefan Bibrowski, Lionel the Lion-Faced Man Lionel the Lion-Faced Man was born Stefan Bibrowski in Poland in 1890. His nickname comes from the medical condition hypertrichosis, known also as werewolf syndrome because it causes excessive hair growth all over the face and body. Interestingly, Stefan's mother believed that he was born this way because his father had been mauled by a lion when she was pregnant with Stefan. Considering Stefan an abomination of God, she chose to give him up when he was four. Stefan was adopted by a showman who gave him his new stage name and took him touring all over Europe. Stefan's looks were really just the hook. His real talents were in performing music. He also performed gymnastics and would tell stories from his life, displaying his gentle personality. Stefan retired from the circus in the late 1920s and returned to Germany. He passed away when he was 41 from a heart attack. 16. Isaac Sprague Isaac Sprague was born with what experts now believe was progressive muscular atrophy. He was actually born healthy and normal, but at age 12, he reported falling sick after going swimming. After that incident, he started rapidly losing weight. He was never able to keep any body fat on after that. His early life was plagued with misfortune. He was sick all the time, 
and could never hold down a job long enough to support himself. His parents both passed away when he was a young man. He finally joined the circus in desperation. Eventually, he would make his way to the American Museum Freak Show run by P.T. Barnum and finally saw success. Tragically, the museum burned down and Isaac managed to survive, but he saw himself unemployed again. He continued to tour on and off until his death. Interestingly, Isaac's three sons were born healthy and lived normal lives. 15. Prince Randian A man known only as Prince Randian became famous in the sideshow industry during the early 20th century, having been born without arms or legs. He was born with Tetra Amelia syndrome, a very rare condition that causes the absence of all limbs. Despite his physical limitations, he led a relatively normal life. He reportedly loved performing in the circus to showcase how he could perform a variety of routine tasks. His act focused on showcasing his ability to perform everyday tasks using only his mouth, such as rolling and lighting a cigarette and shaving. He would roll the cigarette with just his lips and then hold the cigarette in his mouth with a match. After striking the match, he would strategically inhale to get the tip of the cigarette to light and then spit out the match. I don't know. We're only killing time with this circus. We've got bigger time to follow. To shave, he had a razor affixed to a block of wood so he could drag his face along the edge. Prince Randian was married and had five children. He lived to be 63 and passed away shortly after his last show. 14. Myrtle Corbin Prince Randian had no limbs, but another performer named Myrtle Corbin was born with too many. Myrtle was born in 1868, suffering from an extremely rare condition called dipigus. When she was in the womb, her body split at the waist, giving her two pelvises and two sets of legs. Each inner leg was shorter than her main pair of legs and could not support her, but she was able to move them. Surprisingly, there was nothing odd about the pregnancy of Myrtle's mother or her delivery. She was a healthy child and had no issues other than the extra legs. Myrtle joined the sideshow business when she was 13, during a time when many circuses had women wearing fake pairs of extra legs. She toured with the circus for six years before getting married. She and her husband James went on to have five children. Each pelvis had its own uterus attached, and she reportedly used both sides when she had her children. One would be born from the left and one from the right, etc. Myrtle was often described as having a bubbly personality and making friends with everyone she met. When she passed away, her family had her casket encased in concrete to stop potential grave robbers from getting to her remains. 13. Fat Albert a man named T.J. Albert Jackson toured the U.S. in circuses under the stage name Fat Albert. Jackson's case is interesting because he was performing much more recently than most of the others on today's list, well into the 1980s. At his largest, he weighed a staggering 898 pounds. Bearing no connection to the famous Bill Cosby character, Fat Albert was famous for his catchphrase, Hey, hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey! And once famously said, If people are going to stare at me, I might as well get paid for it. His weight seemed to be a genetic quirk. He was born extremely heavy and remained larger than his peers all of his life. Albert passed away in 1988 at age 47. 12. Jojo the Dog-Faced Boy Fedor Jeftichu was a Russian sideshow performer, better known as Jojo the Dog-Faced Boy. Like Lionel the Lion-Faced Man, Fedor was born with hypertrichosis. At the tender age of five, Fedor and his father Adrian, who also had the condition, began touring Europe. To go with Fedor's stage personality, he would bark at audiences to their delight. The pair worked mostly at fairgrounds until they were discovered by Charles Reynolds, a showman from London in 1884. Charles recognized the potential for this type of act, so he called a press conference to allow people to tuck on Fedor's hair to prove it was growing from his face and not glued or taped on. After seeing some success, he eventually made his way to the US where he met P.T. Barnum. Barnum created an elaborate backstory for Fedor claiming he was feral and was caught by a hunter in the woods of Russia. Fedor became wildly successful overnight and performed right up until his death in 1904 when he was struck with pneumonia while on tour. 11. Mirin Dayo A man named Arnold Garrett Henskis, better known as Mirin Dayo, captivated the world with an incredibly unique ability. He was able to pierce his body without bleeding, pain, or injury. At a young age, he realized he had tougher skin than others and started letting people pierce him with weapons for money and would swallow razor blades on command. He eventually began touring to showcase this ability, and his act shocked audiences as well as doctors around the world. 
What they didn't know at the time was that Mirian always had the same crew performers act with him. His partner knew exactly where to pierce him with his lance, following the same path that an original injury had, which left scar tissue. The lance would bite through the scar tissue only, allowing Mirian to do this over and over again. Mirian also used hypnosis as a means to control his reaction to and tolerance to pain. While he acted as though he felt nothing, most experts believe that he would have felt something, and that meditation was how he was able to withstand this injury over and over again. I think he's really doing it. I've seen it with, uh, with colleagues of the Magic Circle, and we all agreed that this is not a trick. It, it, it was real. I mean, there was a real sword going through a real body. Eventually, Mirian's riskiness caught up with him. After swallowing a needle, he was hospitalized to have it removed from his intestines, and he passed away from complications. 10. Minnie Woolsey A young woman named Minnie Woolsey, born with Virtuosecal Syndrome, toured under the stage name Cuckoo the Bird Girl. Virtuosecal Syndrome is a congenital skeletal disorder characterized by a narrow face, beak-like nose, short stature, a receding jaw, and in some cases, intellectual disability. Minnie experienced all of these complications and was thought to be at least partially blind. Not much is known about her early life, but rumor has it that she was discovered and rescued from a mental asylum in Georgia, after which she began performing. Her act was simple, usually consisting of dancing while wearing a feathered costume. <laughs> Minnie is best remembered today for her appearance in the film Freaks, alongside Schlitzi and Johnny Eck the Halfboy. 9. Daisy and Violet Hilton Conjoined twins Daisy and Violet Hilton became famous in the U.S. during the 1920s and 30s. Well, well, well. Tomorrow night's the big night, eh, Daisy? And I'm thrilled to death. Unlike some other pairs of conjoined twins, Daisy and Violet shared no organs. They were connected at the hip by flesh and blood vessels only. Had they been born today, doctors would probably be able to separate them safely. But at the time of their birth, 1908, doctors were fearful that surgery would lead to one or both of their deaths. They were adopted by their mother's employer, Mary Hilton, who wished to capitalize on their unique condition. She began sending the girls on tour when they were just three, and the Hiltons kept all of their earnings. When Mary passed away, the girls were adopted by her daughter, Edith. In Edith's home, the girls were horribly abused, beaten if they did not obey, and kept in captivity most of the time. By 1931, when the girls were in their early 20s, they'd had enough and sued their adoptive family. They were awarded emancipation and a large sum of money, which freed them to perform on their own accord. Tragedy struck again when the girls were abandoned by their own management after a show in North Carolina in 1961. The twins decided to stay in North Carolina and began working at a grocery store. They passed away eight years later from the Hong Kong flu. 8. Zip the Pinhead Zip the Pinhead, born William Henry Johnson, was born in 1926 with microcephaly. At first, his family didn't realize anything was wrong, until they noticed his head was not growing with the rest of his body. William's parents were former slaves and very poor. They decided to allow their son to go on tour for the income. P.T. Barnum eventually found him and began billing him as the missing link. His fabricated backstory was that he was captured in Africa and was not fully human. William had a very long career working as a performer. As time went on, his act changed themes and he was allowed to act civilized on stage and often performed with Cuckoo the Bird Girl, amongst other famous acts. William was living on Coney Island when one Sunday he swam into the ocean to rescue a little girl who was reportedly drowning. This event affected his health. The following year, he developed a bad case of bronchitis, which would eventually take his life. 7. Grace McDaniels a woman named Grace McDaniels became famous for a facial deformity, which earned her the nickname the Mule-Faced Woman. There is some confusion as to her actual diagnosis, but most experts believe that she was suffering from Sturge Weber Syndrome, a rare vascular disorder that can affect the face and brain. Grace chose to nickname herself, as she toured for a while under the stage name The World's Ugliest Woman, which she hated. Most of her life was characterized by a delicate balance of learning to accept herself and dealing with the heckling she would see from audiences. Some people would even faint when they saw her, which Grace found upsetting. She had one child, a son, who grew up to become his mother's manager. He had problems with substance abuse and gambling, and passed away before his mother did. Grace lived to be 69 and passed away at her home in Florida. 6. Bill Dirks Bill Dirks was billed as the man with three eyes and two noses but he actually had two eyes. 
only one of which he could see out of. Bill was born with an extremely severe cleft palate, which effectively split his face. He had a deep rift separating his face, giving him the odd appearance of having two faces. He would paint on a third eye for his performances to complete the look. Bill was born to normal parents on a farm, who were reportedly ashamed of the son's appearance. He joined the circus when he was 40 and met his wife, fellow sideshow performer Mildred. Bill sadly outlived his wife and worked right up until his death in 1973. 5. Rudolf Lucassi Rudolf Lucassi and his family were African, but born with albinism. The family joined the circus in 1857, at a time in which albinism was not fully understood, especially in communities of color. Barnum and Bailey's billed them as living oddities. Rudolph, his wife, and his children were all fully albino, with pure white skin and hair and pink eyes. The family toured with Barnum and Bailey's for years, until Rudolph and his wife died. 4. Robert Melvin Robert Melvin was born in 1920 with neurofibromatosis, which is a rare condition that causes fibrous tumors. Robert's case was particularly severe. Some patients only have moles or small knots on their bodies, but Robert had an enormous tumor on his face, giving him the odd appearance of having two faces. His appearance was so shocking to audiences that many people believed that the tumor was fake. The right side of his face was totally distorted by the tumor, which actually barred him from attending school as a child. Robert managed to educate himself and endeared himself to everyone in the town he lived in. He apparently never thought of his strange appearance as a disability, but rather as an asset. Robert had a long and successful career performing. Look, I know medically, and I've been examined by some of the best doctors in the United States. And by the time he passed away in 1995, he had garnered a huge following. His funeral was well attended, and his memory is still celebrated to this day. 3. Pasquale Pinon Similarly to Robert Melvin, Pasquale Pignon was born with a facial deformity. In this case, it was a large benign tumor on his forehead. When he was discovered by a sideshow recruiter, circus management decided to have a fake second face made and stuck onto the growth, giving him the appearance of having a second head protruding from his forehead. The second face was a silver plate that was surgically placed under the skin. However, after a few years, it was discovered that the silver plate was compressing Pascal's brain. The manager of the circus he worked for paid to have it and the growth surgically removed. Pascal then returned to his hometown in Texas. 2. Annie Jones The original bearded lady Annie Jones used her platform not just to entertain but to educate. She was born in 1865 and began touring with P.T. Barnum as a young woman. While there were other bearded ladies, Annie is by far the most popular and well-remembered. She had a passion for equality and tried to have the word freak abolished from the sideshow business. This could have been sparked by a traumatic incident in which she was kidnapped as a child and forced to perform against her will. That case was thankfully solved very quickly, but it appeared to have left its mark on Annie. 1. Millie and Christine McCoy Meet Millie and Christine McCoy, also known as the Two-Headed Nightmare. The pair were conjoined twins born in 1851. They were sold at the age of 10 months and passed hands a few times before landing at the North Carolina State Fair. By 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation freed the girls from anyone's ownership and they were free to work at their leisure. One of their previous adoptive parents, Joseph Pearson Smith, eventually caught up with the girls and they were happily reunited. They toured a few more years showcasing their sideways stepping dance and singing abilities. The twins both passed away at the age of 61 from tuberculosis. Their gravestone reads, a soul with two thoughts, two hearts that beat as one. Well, that's all we have for today. If you liked today's video, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to check out our page and watch more videos as well. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.